the function. So remember when graphing it, we go back to our axis of symmetry. And remember, axis of symmetry, x equals opposite of b divided by 2a, which equals negative 4 over 2 times 1, right, which equals negative 2. So to graph it, what we're going to do is you go to your graph, and you go to where negative 2 was. So everybody on the graph goes to negative 2 and graph this axis of symmetry. Remember, this is the, this is the line that's going to reflect your graph. OK, Asana? Wait, so? Um, because for one thing, we're solving for x equals, this is going to, that's where we're solving for x equals. Your axis symmetry is always going to be a vertical line. If you had it horizontally, then you would not be dealing with it. We wouldn't be dealing with the function. We'd be dealing with a function um, uh, x as a function of y. We're not dealing with this. We're dealing with parabolas. They're going to open up. So it's going to be a vertical line. Your axis symmetry always be vertical. Yes? I keep hearing you refer to the, the negative b in that equation as the opposite of b. Opposite of b, yes. So does that mean like if it were 4, it would be negative 4, and if it were negative 4, it would be positive 4? Okay. Yep, got it. All right, so now what we're going to do is once you guys have determined this, then we're just going to create a plot. So we already did the vertex. So some of your work is already done. So you have your x, y points. And what I told you guys to do is what? Pick two points to the right or left. So what would you rather do, right or left? Right. Let's do right. That sounds great. Let's do, how about we do, um, let's do negative 2. Which, what happened when we plugged in negative 2? We got what point? What happened when we plugged in negative 2? We got what, what was our vertex? Negative, negative 5. So what happened? So we're going to pick negative 2 and 0, or negative 1 and 0. That was the vertex, right? That's what we did. Remember when we took negative 2, we plugged it into our equation? The first, first example I showed you, we plugged negative 2 into our function, and we got negative 5. Now, let's plug in negative 1. So you could say y equals, now you're going to plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 squared equals 1 minus 4 minus 1. So now that's going to equal negative 4. Now, let's plug in 0. Well, do you guys remember, when did we plug in 0 before? We did this for what? Finding the y-axis, right? So y, we already know, equals negative 1. So, ladies and gentlemen, now, all we simply do is plot these three points. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the vertex. Negative 1. Negative 1 minus negative 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Okay? So now you have the vertex, right? Because that was at negative 2, 5. That we already wrote down, that was our answer for the vertex. Then we graph the next point. Negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1 down negative 4. Then we graph the next point. 0, negative 1, which is our y-intercept. So now we connect those points like that. And then what does the axis of symmetry tell us we can do? Just reflect it over. So I can go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. OK? So there's our graph. Now the last step we need to do is determine our domain and range. So the last question asked is to find the domain and range. So ladies and gentlemen, if remember, domain and range is all the x values that are part of your graph. No matter what x num whatever x value I plug in, am I always going to get a y value? Is there an x is there a number you can plug in for x that you won't get a y value? No, there's all infinite many, right? It doesn't matter what number you want to plug in for x. No matter what number you plug for x, you're going to get an answer, right? Always, you're always going to get an answer. Whatever number you plug in for x, you're always going to get an answer. So therefore, the domain is all the answers from negative infinity to infinity. However, no matter what number I plug in, am I going to get all, I, is there infinite many answers I can get? What is the domain? Domain is going to be all, the set of all x values that you can plug into your function that will be a part of the function. Okay. So that's the answer right? Is negative right, because you can, you can plug in, no. For your quadratic, so yes, unless there's some different constraints, yeah, your domain is always going to be in. Because you can plug in any number in for your domain. However, let's look at finding the range. 
no matter what number I plug in, no matter what number I plug in for your range, am I going to get? Can I get any answer for the y? Well, can I get negative twenty no. down for the y? No. The range is constricted. If the lowest the range goes is from negative five. Well, what's the highest the range goes? Infinity. So you say the range is equal to negative five to infinity. Okay. okay.